and uh, well, it just it was too much for him, you know, and no wonder, you know, because they all said the same thing, and he'd say, well, that was a dream, and they'd say, no, and it was the most real thing that ever happened to me, and he'd say, well, you know, it's an archetypal experience, and they'd say, no, 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 that was no archetypal experience, I went somewhere else, and I saw things, and I'm back, and like, I don't care what you think, and like, who the hell knows, right, because it's all subjective, but, but the weird thing about it is that everyone's reporting the same thing, how the hell do you account for that? And then the shaman, you know, when they take these psychedelic chemicals, they basically say the same thing, they say, well, first of all, it more or less killed me, that's this, you know, I dissolved to a skeleton, and then I climbed the tree that unites heaven and earth, and I went into the realm of the gods, and they gave me some information, and I'm back. It's like, okay, well, you know, we don't really know what to make of that, and, we, and certainly that's what Eliad describes when he describes the shamanic, the shamanic procession, not the shamanic initiation, and, you know, there's dissolution to a skeleton first, and then like a death, the symbolic death, or experienced as an actual death, and then bang, up into the realm of the gods, and then they come back. It's a very old idea, I mean, that's a medieval representation of the tunnel that people travel through at the end of their life, to, you know, to find the light, which is a very common near-death experience report, and people don't have any idea what the hell to do with those reports, except say, well, it's the paroxysms of the dying brain, which you'd expect to be a hell of a lot more random, in my opinion. And the idea is there's a rebirth after that. And you know, here, this is the Scandinavian representation of that tree that unites earth with heaven. And so there's the Scandinavian representation. It has a snake, snakes down here eating it. And then, that's the Amazonian representation. It's like, how the hell do you account for that? I mean, those, those pictures are so similar that it's just, it's beyond belief. Well, you know, we lived in trees for a long time. A long, 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 long time. Millions of years. And there were lots of snakes around them. And so the idea that reality is a tree that's surrounded by a snake is, that's in us, man. It's down there. It's deep. And there's something about it that's true. Now, not true like we normally think of truth, but truth, true in an entirely different manner. And there's something about it that's true. Now, not true like we normally think of truth, but truth, true in an entirely different manner. So you're going to believe it's a higher power because the way this is. In order to come into this flesh, I guess this is how it got to be. And I don't know, man, that is, that, that is fucking trippy because I felt like I was laying back in a machine, dude. I was in a machine and the dome, which is the dome that they're talking about that we're trapped in. They say we trapped in a dome. Fucking yeah, you're trapped in a dome. It's a, it's a dome. It's a dome, and it has a cross, and it has the like the net, like the the netted in the glass where you can still see through it. Though. Like the metal part going down like that, and then you can see another metal piece coming across like that, and it seemed like it was like kind of netted, like it was like kind of like a net or something. And I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, what the fuck am I seeing? And like as I look closer, I can see through it. In certain spots. Here are some snapshots of that footage, uh, enhanced in various ways, just to see if I can bring out the grid lines a little bit better. Um, this one is uh, as I was zooming in on the star, so you can still see the line there. And just to give some technical information, one thing I did differently with this particular shot is I'd um, taken the shutter speed down to about six the lowest it could go and uh, just to try and get as much exposure as I could. The focus was at its maximum, I'd set that manually and uh, it was recording at 50 frames per second. Uh, so hopefully this information will help. So, and all that's pretty damn strange. We'll stop with this. My son drew this when he was seven years old. It blew me away, man. I thought it was so cool, so I had it laminated. And so, here is what it is, on the right hand side, that's order, it's like the yin yang thing, that's order, left side, chaos, right, and those are all mushroom houses, which I thought was amazing, <laughs> and then, there's this river that runs right down the middle, like the line for order and chaos, and then there's this tree that goes up to heaven, and that's heaven up there, it's like, there's St. Peter, there's the pearly gates, there's the clouds, it's like, 
It's, he never went to church, you know. It's like, what the hell? And then there's a little bug there that goes up and down from heaven to earth. And that was him. And I thought, he had a very organized psyche, that kid. He was a very, very stable kid and still is. And I, he drew that and I thought, Jesus, that's just bloody well unbelievable. And I still think that when I look at it. And that's a great example of an archetype.